Well, greetings, everyone. Pastor Chuck here. <clears throat> I wanted to do just a uh, an update from our trip uh, to uh, Africa. We just returned from uh, three weeks in Africa, and uh, we were in Burundi, uh, Kenya, and uh, Uganda. And uh, it's a great trip. Uh, a lot of challenges, uh, but I want to begin by sharing just a testimony of the goodness of the Lord and the thankfulness that we have for the prayer covering and all of you who prayed for us. There was an occasion in Burundi where we slipped, split up into two different groups. Pastor Dwight was with one group going to minister, and uh, I was with another group, and uh, it was raining that day. The driver was driving uh, fast, and he should have been, went into a left-hand turn, and the car began to slide. And it, it slid off the road when it hit the, got off the pavement and hit the dirt, it turned on its side, continued to, to slide. And uh, uh, there was no guardrail on that particular spot of the road. And also there was about a 600 foot ravine uh, uh, that they were sliding toward. And as they were sliding, there were two small trees of about three inches in diameter that the car ended up hitting up against and stopped there uh, and uh, kept them from going over. Uh, everybody was safe. Uh, Pastor Dwight uh, injured his shoulder. We're not sure to what degree he's having it checked this week, but we could easily have been having four funerals uh, there. And so we just, we thank the Lord for his goodness. The Lord just said, not today. And we, I just, I personally believe that the Lord stationed an angel right there who stopped the car and didn't let it go over the, the uh, end of the ravine. So that's a good testimony of the goodness of the Lord, and we're very thankful. And that, it shook up the team, obviously, but uh, they were very appreciative and very thankful for the Lord's protection. So uh, I, I can't imagine where we would be in this trip if we didn't have your prayers and your prayer covered because we sensed those things, knew those things, and we're thankful. So anyway, so we, we uh, ended up doing 17 graduations while we were there. Um, we uh, graduated over 1,100 students with either their associates or their bachelor's degree. Uh, it's an amazing thing that's happening with our schools. In Burundi alone, we have now over 6,200 students in Burundi. We have uh, over 200 schools in Burundi. And it's just, it's an amazing thing. And we're seeing uh, the Lord uh, move in mighty ways, literally uh, discipling the nations, I believe, preparing him for the day we live in and for his coming. So that's, that's exciting. And, and we just hear so many testimonies of leaders who uh, uh, their lives have been touched. Uh, there were two leaders I was talking to, and one of them made this statement. He said, before the Bible school, he said, I pastored a church. He said, I would speak sometimes for two hours. And he said, I didn't say anything in reference to the Bible or in reference to quality you know, teaching and discipleship. He said, since then, he said, now I speak for 30 minutes. And he said, the people are being discipled. And the other pastor I was talking to had not had any uh, official schooling and uh, didn't have a lot of respect in the community, and even within his church didn't have a lot of respect. And he said, since he has taken the biblical course and received his bachelor's degree, he said that has all changed. He said he is preaching from a, a biblical, truthful perspective, and he said the people are realizing the truth, they are receiving the truth, and they are being led on their journey to discipleship. And so the schools are making quite a difference. Let me tell you about a little man named Ishmael. Ishmael is 15 years old, and in one of our graduations in Burundi, he received his associate degree. And his story is this. He was raised by two, uh, his parents were Christians, and they converted to Islam. Somewhere in that process, they rejected him, and he became homeless. Uh, he ended up, he, he came under the, the guidance of a, a guardian, an older gentleman, probably middle 70s, but he spent much of his time in the streets. Uh, he's called to, to preach, and he it's amazing. He goes in, in the marketplace and in the street, preaches the gospel. Uh, while we were there, we did a crusade, and so we took him with us. 
to the crusade. And I was sitting next to him. We were going to have him share his testimony. I was sitting next to him before he went off, and he had a little four-by-four four notebook. He was leafing through that. And um, <clears throat> as he leafed through that, uh, he, I could see just the little notes he had scribbled from scriptures and that sort of thing. When he got on the stage, and there were probably 5,000 people at this crusade, um, and he's 15, but he looks like he's maybe 11 or 12. Anyway, Ishmael got up there, and there was such an anointing and a grace on him as he spoke. I mean, he just commanded the stage. I mean, it was it was amazing. So we were really attracted to him and his story. And so we ended up, we connected him with our team in Burundi. They're going to walk with him, mentor him, and be a covering for him. And Harvest Prep said that uh, because he wants to finish his bachelor's degree as well, uh, we're going to take care of the cost of that for him so he doesn't have to struggle with that. And so we were able to buy him some clothes and some different things. And, and the team in Burundi began to just open their arms to him and, and uh, appreciate and love love him, love on him. And uh, I just can't wait to see where this story ends because he has a wonderful call in his life. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, Uganda. Uh, uh, <clears throat> This is our first time working with Bishop Godfrey. Two years ago in Rwanda, we trained him and his team. Uh, we hadn't been back there since. Um, and they had started nine schools. But it was such a pleasure to work with uh, the bishop there in Uganda. He has, a, uh, he has a, a church right in the middle of a refugee camp. He has 130 orphans that he feeds every day, two meals a day. Uh, he has a, a Christian school there where they train and, and teach the children. And this man has such a heart for people and a heart for his nation. Um, and so we just we just have a like heart. And it was just, it's a, it's a blessing that the Lord brought us together. And we, we just so appreciate that. Uh, when we went to Uganda, I went there first, and then Dwight followed a couple days later. And uh, they had me scheduled to do a marriage seminar. And uh, I thought maybe it'd be one session or something, but here they scheduled it for two days. Um, we weren't even sure it was going to happen, and, uh, and I didn't take any notes or prepare anything. But I ended up just, uh, I taught many things. I teach premarital couples. And anyway, it, it was really exciting because it got to be joyous and exciting. Uh, there's one case where uh, right in the second row, there's a lady on the aisle, her pastor husband, these were pastors and wives, uh, uh, her husband was there, I was talking about communication, she reached over, grabbed him by the ear, pulled him close and said, are you listening to this? And it became kind of a joke, those two, and, and, the, and the, the couples just appreciated and received what we had to share. In fact, when we got done, uh, they said, uh, we'd like two more days of training and we said well we just we can't we don't have room in our schedule so maybe next time that we don't normally do marriage seminars but I had a lot of fun doing that at the end of the first day Bishop came to me he had a smile on his face and he said you really stirred up a hornet's nest today and uh, and all I did was talk about what a biblical marriage looks like and priorities <clears throat> that the wife is not second to the, the church the children are not their families are not and that's, that's a, uh, a theme that kind of grates on the leaders there because they still look down on women and they don't necessarily honor and treat them with honor. And so the women loved it and we had fun with it. And uh, it was a great time. It was a surprise, you know. So we don't normally do married seminars, but we did there. And uh, the, the final thing I want to share with you is this. <clears throat> uh, our we have two courses that are really radically touching the nations. One is a family and uh, a marriage and a course. And the second one is community development. In community development, we teach them things like animal husbandry, crop rotation, crop fertilization, how to purify water, how a woman can have a healthy pregnancy, personal hygiene. And uh, those are themes that, that, that what are, what's happening is that the, the schools are commingling their money, and they are then they're starting micro businesses. For example, one school uh, joined their money together. They bought 300 chickens, and those chickens now lay about 250 eggs a day. So they take those, you know, and they use them for their needs. They 
they make it available to the church and sell them at a reduced price to the church. And then they go out into the community and give those away or help the community with that. Uh, they do, they're doing things like uh, raising an, uh, uh, rabbits and they, they consume the, the meat, uh, they sell the meat, uh, they give some away. And so it is giving them a means to practically provide for their needs and to lift their standard of living. And it's just, it's an amazing thing the way they've grasped that concept and began to apply it. And so, um, you know, in closing today, I just, I appreciate all of you who prayerfully and financially have supported us. God is doing great things. It's, it's a joy to be there. Uh, I feel like the divine timing of this is absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, the Lord is, is uh, doing great things. He is literally discipling the nations before our eyes to prepare for his coming. Let me close with this thought. You know, uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says that you will keep in perfect peace he whose mind is stayed upon you <clears throat> because he trusts in you. Now, it's interesting there that you is our Heavenly Father. And so you could say it this way. Heavenly Father will keep him, you and I, as we focus on the Lord in perfect peace uh, as long as we keep our mind focused on him and continue to trust him no matter what we're facing whether it be the pandemic or personal things you're going through, your Heavenly Father loves you. You can trust Him. He is watching over you, and He will give you the peace that passes all understanding uh, and will, guide your, will guard your mind and your heart, uh, according to Philippians 4, 6, and 7. So, Lord bless you. Uh, we, we send our greetings to you uh, and appreciate uh, the team and the family of Harvest Prep that allows us to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Blessings to you.